All right, we're going to take a peek at our king oysters here. And uh, so far, so good. Um, I am going to pull them out so you guys can uh, take a better look too. But you can see they're extending over top of where the plastic is already with some really nice thick fat fruit bodies here. And uh, I'm actually going to cut the plastic off down near the top of the substrate block level because you can see um, there's some kind of pushing trying to push the plastic out kind of forming on the side so I'm gonna pull them out and uh, we'll do a little plastic trimming you guys can see a little better what I'm talking about here see how they're really trying to push against this plastic here it's a big fat fruit body so I'm gonna uh, kind of set them free and trim this plastic off now right about substrate level. I think my temps are cool enough in the basement where these are still uh, still growing really well for me. I'm around 62, 63 degrees and uh, kings do like it cool so I was thinking uh, this would be a good opportunity to grow them before it gets too warm as we move into spring and it seems to be working out really well. Got them in a little more light here uh, so I trimmed away the plastic a little bit more give them some room to breathe and you can see this is our 2.5 percent block here and this is our five percent block here and it'll be interesting to see how the final yield ends up right now the uh five percent block is growing some much thicker fatter mushrooms but uh maybe not quite as many than the uh 2.5 percent but really have nice quality fruit bodies on both so i'm just gonna Put them back in our fruiting chamber and let them finish up and check back in when it's picking time. Our king oyster are ready to pick. Well, at least one block is. Uh, the other block needs another day or two and is still in the humidity chamber. Uh, we'll take a peek at that one in a second. But this one, especially these two biggest caps, are starting to turn up. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one off. Uh, this is pretty common for me when I grow kings that, uh, you know, you get a lot of different size fruit bodies, a lot of variation. Um, some of them will be kind of softer in texture. Those I usually get rid of. Uh, the ones that are nice and firm are the ones that, uh, that I'll keep to eat. And I'm going to eat these guys because they're definitely one of my favorites. Uh, we'll take a peek at our other block here see in there so they're close to i would say maybe one more day i'm gonna give them and then i'll pick them off as well making some nice fatty stems there so this block here was our it was our five percent supplementation block that one i'll have to wait to weigh up tomorrow but uh this one i'm going to pick here is our 2.5 percent so we'll at least uh be able to get a weight on that i am going to use a like a sharp fillet knife to help kind of trim these off the surface of the substrate and then we'll go for flush two so let's get picking let's see if we can get these big guys off there yeah they broke off okay these are pretty heavy <clears throat> Just that cluster I just picked weighs eight ounces by itself, so. It's looking like about 12 ounces there for the uh, for this block. See they're just under 12 ounces, but those are all nice firm fruit bodies anyway. Some of them aren't as big obviously, but uh, they'll all be good to eat. So off of our 2.5% block, we got just under 12 ounces 11 and three quarters one note uh when you're picking these off um i did kind of trim slash pull away uh the stem butts and the whatever little abort clusters that were on the top in preparation for the second flush and i did remove some substrate but uh it's better to <clears throat> lose you know pull off a little substrate and get the black nice and clean on top because you don't want to leave any of those stem butts or aborts from the first flush. Otherwise, those are just going to mold up on you and create contamination. So this guy's all ready to go back in the fruiting chamber, and we'll pick the second block tomorrow. This is our second and last king oyster block, and we're going to pick it off right now and uh, see what our yield is. Now, I think we got about 12 ounces 
off of our block yesterday and that one was supplemented at 2.5 percent wheat bran this one was supplemented at five percent wheat bran so theoretically uh, we should get a little better yield off this black uh, not really tall mushrooms but they are really fat so we'll see what our weight's gonna be all right so this block with the five percent supplementation came out to about nine and a half ounces and I think the other one was about 11 three quarter with the uh, 2.5 percent supplementation we are on to round two of our king oyster picking uh, this is actually the second flush here of the 5% supplemented wheat bran block. You can see that. That made some beautiful, nice, fat, second flush mushrooms. It is really common for King Oyster to make all these uh, aborted little pins. That's really typical with the other strains I've grown. This one seems to do the same thing. So as I'm picking here, I'm only going to pick the nice, firm viable fruits. I'm not going to weigh all these little aborts. Actually this block here, uh, I turned it on its side just because I was kind of limited for space in my fruiting chamber and I got some other projects I want to get going. So after the second flush, I'm not going to keep it around for a third. Um, it's just going to go to the mushroom graveyard also known as my compost pile but it did uh it did fruit really well side fruiting you can see those are some beautiful beautiful fruits so you can side fruit this or top fruit it second flush on our five percent block eight and three eighths ounces so only about an ounce less than the first flush so uh, that's a really nice second flush this is going to be the final way up here in our experiment this is the second flush actually a pretty small second flush just under five ounces off of our 2.5 percent supplemented block and so if you total up the two flushes for the 2.5 percent we're at about 17 ounces or so for two flushes and with the five percent we're actually a little bit above that um i believe between like 17 to 18 ounces so pretty similar just a hair more yield out of the five percent and i have some other grows i want to get rolling so we're going to go ahead and move these to the compost pile but uh, the 2.5 percent definitely had a bigger first flush you know we were up uh, over 11 ounces but uh, then the second flush was quite a bit smaller so in the end they were pretty similar with just the slight edge to the five percent brand supplementation which is pretty much what you would expect. So that's gonna be it for this experiment. Uh, hope you guys got something out of it. It was interesting for me. Um, I guess the moral of the story is, you know, you can increase your yields a little bit incrementally by increasing the brand, uh, your overall black yields. But, uh, you know, there's not a huge difference between 2.5%, 5%. But overall thoughts on this strain, uh, th again, this is the King Oyster or Pleurota Serengi from Gary at Fresh Fungi, and it was a great strain, honestly. Um, I've grown quite a few different strains of Kings, and uh, some of them are really tough to get to pin, and you have to cold shock them and do some different things uh, to try and manipulate them, get them to, uh, to pin well for you. That was not an issue with this strain. I basically just left them right in the grow bags and uh, let them pin right in the bags and once i saw some nice fat healthy pins on the top of the block i just trimmed uh trimmed the bag back to around substrate level and put them in the fruiting chamber and they just took right off uh, again i'm at 62 63 degrees down here right now so that's those are like perfect temperatures for growing kings they do like it cool um, and the strain seemed to make uh, not really long mushrooms, uh, just really nice, stubby, fat kings. And again, the you know the whole stem is edible with these, and awesome. I usually just slice them into steaks and fry them up. They always turn out really nicely. The they have a great texture, great flavor, and uh, so overall, I think this is a great strain. Uh, 
quick to pin, really aggressive in culture, aggressive fast spawn run. So more awesome genetics from Gary at Fresh Fungi. So check out his Etsy page. That's where he sells his cultures at. And that's going to be the end of this experiment. So I'll catch you guys next video.